Hey everyone, welcome back to Unorthodox Cricket. Um, in another pretty decent game in the Cricket World Cup last night, um, Bangladesh set Afghanistan 262 to 1, um, and Afghanistan started pretty strongly, uh, but then things just sort of faded away, and Shakib Al Hassan um, just ran through them. Um, now, what we want to do in today's video is I just want to, got a couple of topics um, that are going around in the cricketing world that I'd like to talk to you about. So, firstly, just Shakib Al Hassan and how fantastic he is at the moment. Um, he's going to be one of the players of the tournament. Definitely player of the tournament for me at the moment, uh, but we'll come back to him. Um, secondly, a couple of issues around the New Zealand team and Kane Williamson um, regarding slow over rates. Um, thirdly, Andre Russell being ruled out of the World Cup with his knees, um, so that's a massive blow for the West Indians. Um, then the huge one, Australia versus England tonight. I know I spoke about that last night, but just a couple of points just to recap there. Um, and then we'll end the video by looking at the top run scorers uh, for the tournament so far. Now let's talk about Shakib Al Hassan. Yet again, he was instrumental in the win last night against Afghanistan, not only with the bat, but then second innings with the ball. Um, Bangladesh was struggling a little bit up top, and then Shakib came in, uh, looked certain as ever, and put 51 on the board before he got skittled. Um, and then in the second innings, what does he do? Comes in, takes 5 for 29 off his 10, um, and just wrapped the game up. Um, Afghanistan were looking promising before he came into the attack. And then he just does what he does. Um, now, just looking at his tournament so far, easily the player of the tournament so far, 476 runs at an average of 95.2. To go along with that, he's striking the ball at 99 runs per 100 balls. This includes 200s and 350s. Now, that alone would qualify him as batsman of the tournament so far. Leading run scorer, great strike rate, 200s, 350s, um, and averaging 95, I mean, what more can you really ask for from a, a number three bat? Um, but not only that, Shakib has 10 wickets at an average of 30. Slightly on the high side, but the way the spinners have been going um, this World Cup, you'd take an average of 30. Um, but not only that, economy rate of five and a half. Um, he's sort of up there in the top three or four for economy uh, for bowlers for this tournament. Um, but I think if Bangladesh should have any chance of progressing to the semis, Shakib is going to be absolutely massive part of that um, and unfortunate the way he started he's really got to keep that up um, They can push through to the semis. They've got, they've got a couple of big games against Pakistan and India um, But you can't just rely on Shakib. He's going to need support from Mushfika, which he's had all tournament But the big ones for me are Tam and Iqbal needs to step up. He's been on the scene for so long He is a good player, but he just hasn't fired at this World Cup um, and then there's other guys like Sumi Shaka who have proved that they've got that striking ability. Um, but Bangladesh will really be looking for Shakib to keep up his formal tournament. And then other guys, Tamanik Iqbal, Mushfika to really push on. And then that will give them that outside chance of making the semis. Now next up, there's a bit of concern around the New Zealand team and mainly Kane Williamson. Now in the game against the West Indies, Kane Williamson was fined 20% of his match fee for a slow over rate. Now, I can guarantee Kane Williamson won't care any less about the 20% of the match fee, but the big one, if he has another incident, he's going to get a match ban. Um, now, that would be absolutely huge for the New Zealand team, especially coming into the later stages of the tournament when they've got some massive games on the line. Now, personally, trying to be objective, I am a massive New Zealand fan, obviously, being a Kiwi, but to lose a player like Kane Williamson um, in the World Cup, for me, that just sort of ruins the competition a bit. Um, I wouldn't like Kane Williamson to miss out just as much as I'd hate to see Steve Smith, David Warner, um, any massive players, um, regardless of how much I like or dislike them. Um, I just want to see the best cricketers in action for this World Cup. Um, now, there has been a bit of talk in the media about New Zealand potentially playing two spinners to increase their over rate. Um, I can't see Gary Steele and Kane Williamson doing that. I think they're more likely just to be more uh, proactive about getting through the overs. Um, but then, again, it's cricket, um, and there's some things that you just can't influence. Um, now, just something I thought of, um, I don't know what the regulations and rules are, um, slash morally, around this topic, but what if New Zealand were to give the captaincy to someone else for the next few games? Um, all they'd need to do is toss the coin. Kane Williamson can still control things on the field, um, but yet again, I don't know how the ICC would look at that. I don't know morally um, how that sits. Um, but yet again, I just don't want to see good players missing out on this World Cup because of slow overrates. Um, 
I hate slow over eights. I love a good game of cricket that's played quickly, but at the same time, it's cricket. You're there for six, seven hours watching anyway. Um, an extra 20 minutes so the captains get things right. In a World Cup, is that the end of the world? Is that worth getting rid of big players, Williamson's, Finches, just and really putting that on the captain? I don't personally don't think so. Um, but let me know in the comments what you guys think. Um, if there are any rules around changing a captain, there was nothing that I could find. Um, and what you guys think morally about changing captain just for the sake of the coin toss. Now, massive news overnight. Andre Russell out of the World Cup. Now, that's an absolutely devastating blow for the West Indies, just knowing what he's capable of. So far in this World Cup, he's taken five wickets at an average of 20. But he's only bowled the 19 overs, um, and that's purely just because of his bad knees. Um, now, it's a real shame, as you can see, he is a wicket taker, um, and that's going to be a massive blow for the West Indies. With the bat this tournament, he has been a little bit disappointing. He's only scored the 36 at an average of 12. Um, but if we take a look at his IPL 2019 performance, um, we can just see how much of a massive loss he is for the West Indies. So in the IPL 2019, he scored 510 runs at an average of 56. But the big thing here is he scored those runs at a strike rate of 204. Now that's the kind of player who is going to win you games in this World Cup. He's going to tear bowling attacks apart. Um, and he's just going to influence the game like no one else can. So for me personally, I think Andre Russell's a huge loss. I know his tournament hasn't been great so far. But... Just knowing his reputation, that's just massive for the West Indies. There's no way they can replace a guy like that. Um, and that's going to make their push for the semis so much tougher. Guys like Gale, Hetmeyer, Shy Hope, um, Jason Holder, they're all really going to have to step up um, and just hope like how guys like Braithwaite can come through like they did against New Zealand. Now, as I spoke about last night, I'm absolutely fizzing for this England-Australia game tonight. Um, two of the form teams going head to head. Um, from my opinion, two of the most devastating opening bowling attacks versus two of the best uh, opening pairs going around. Um, obviously, England missing Roy, but Bearstow, Finch, Warner, three of the best openers you'll find going around in this tournament. Um, now, something I forgot to mention last night if England lose this game to Australia tonight, it's really putting the pressure on um, for their India and New Zealand games. They're currently on eight points, um, so if they lose tonight, they're going to need to win at least one of those games. Um, otherwise, it really leaves the door open for Bangladesh, West Indies to scrape through into a semi-final position. Um, so a loss tonight for England would be huge. Um, massive expectations around them before this World Cup, obviously going into it as favourites. Um, they've changed the way they play cricket, they're playing at home, um, and they've got what I think is probably the best batting lineup in this tournament. So if they lose to Australia tonight, um, it just adds a bit more pressure to that changing room. Um, and then who knows, going into that India and New Zealand game there. But either way, I'm super excited for this game tonight. Um, let me know in the comments uh, which way you guys think it might go. Personally, I think England will have it, but I still think that battle is going to be won um, with the new nut up front. Now, it's been a great World Cup for runs so far, so let's take a look at the leaderboard and see who's dominating. As we spoke about before, Shakib al Hassan is leading the run scoring list with 476. Um, this is closely followed by David Warner, who scored 447. He's definitely been a lot more sedate this tournament, um, but it's converting to runs, so that's the main thing. In third spot, Joe Root, he's been classy as always, 424 runs. Um, Warner's batting partner there, Aaron Finch, 396. Being the aggressor, which has allowed Warner to take a bit more time, which is why they've been so successful and why Australia have done so well so far. And then in the fifth spot is Kane Williamson on 373. Um, back to back hundreds for Williamson um, and just really dominating as he always does. Just absolutely loves to bat. Now, there's three players not on this list who I think might be right up there come the end of the World Cup. The first one is Ross Taylor. He's been in phenomenal form since the 2015 World Cup, and ever since his eye surgery, um, he just looks like he's going to score runs every single day. The next one is Steve Smith. Now, for him to do that, I think he needs to bat at three. He needs to be up there. He's the, one of the best batsmen in the world. Um, 
I know Kawaj is there, but for me, Smith has to face as many balls as he can and come in at the fall of either Warner or Finch. And the last one, and I think is key to Bangladesh's success, is Tamid Iqbal. Um, I spoke about him before. He's been around for so long, he's done it, um, but it's time for him to step up and deliver it at the World Cup, particularly when Bangladesh need it. Let me know if there's any players in there that have missed out who you think might be up the top of this list come the end of the tournament. Thanks again for watching everyone. Let me know in the comments what you thought of the topics discussed today. Um, any feedback on me, my presentation, anything you'd like to see covered um, in future videos. Um, and if you could leave a like and subscribe, that'd be awesome. Um, but enjoy tonight's game. I'm sure it's going to be awesome. Um, and I'll see you again tomorrow.